I'm gonna let the healing process happen this time. I'm gonna let it all go smoothly. Get me ligaments back to full strength, get better. Then I can get a full fight camp behind me. What's happening, people? We put a Q&A out on YouTube to all the loyal fans out there. Obviously, it's been a while. I haven't seen you for a bit, so let's jump right in it. Manuel Davis, 18, definitely not too late to get into MMA and become a pro, you know what I mean? I'm sure it didn't Anthony Joshua. Not, didn't start boxing until he was 18 or something. And MMA is a much younger sport than boxing. There's a lot of MMA fighters now who didn't start doing it until the 20s and some of them even the 30s. So, and they're in the UFC and stuff, so yeah. Believe in yourself, like you can go as far as you want. So, David Robertson, like this question, good question. Yeah, I did. From the start, when I was a little skinny kid with a skinhead, I always believed in myself that much that I thought that this could happen. You know what I mean? That I could be fighting on the biggest stage in the world. As soon as I had my first fight, amateur, when I was 16, I said, like saying, I'd be, before that, my first tournament, Jiu Jitsu tournament, I said I'd be in the UFC. I always say to people, you've got to envision things, and that's sort of I think I envisioned. You know what I mean? I envision being in the UFC, getting me arm raised in the UFC, and long may it continue. This one's from Willie Gigi, felt her name. Where about did you grow up in Liverpool and what was it like? I grew up in Heighton, lad. It's a big area in Liverpool, so you'd have to say like different parts. I'm from by Pilch Lane. Nice area, you know what I mean? As my dad likes to always say to me, you were born on the right side of Pilch Lane. So, parts of it can be rough, you know what I mean? But I don't really particularly think by mine is, so. Got it to a bit of no good life, but that was just to occupy time, you know what I mean? There was nothing to do. So, yeah, we was, we could be little bastards than we wanted to be, but we wasn't that bad. Yeah, we're at my birds, Mars and Dars now. Let's give this to my birds, Al fella, see what he thinks of it. Let's find out. The dog will bark his head off now as well. The what do you want me to say? <laughs> <laughs> he can't answer yeah, the door right now. It fits up to 12 cards, innit? That's ideal for your cards, that, innit? You get a lifetime warranty with it. You get 20% off as well. Using, <laughs> using the link underneath, you get 20% off. You can tell it's been well made. Good Father's Day gift. Definitely. So as you can see, Ronnie's happy with his wallet. Get your half fellow one for Father's Day. Link below. Yeah, link's in the description. 20% off. And that leads us right into another question off Dusk Plains. I like this question as well because he's asking if, depending on what gym you go to, will you have that sort of style? And do you need to find the style first before you walk into a gym? No. I just walked into next year and started training and I think your style finds you, you know what I mean? Especially at first with me, I was more of a grappler, more jiu-jitsu off my back and then as my style developed I got better on top and other things but some gyms are like that, like you can go to certain gyms and like they mainly do, they all, all the fighters look the same, they all get the takedown and get to mount or they all like try and stand and bang and then go for guillotines if someone shoots in and stuff like that but most good gyms Everyone doesn't look the same, you know what I mean? You can't have like one prototype. Like, like some gyms you look at and every single fighter looks exactly the same when they step in the cage, but that's why I think it's good to go to a gym what isn't like that, so you can develop your own skill set. So the next question I found, Mitchy, when do I see myself returning to fighting this year? And will it be someone in the ranks? Lad, I'll be honest, I'm open to fight this year. I don't know if I'll be able to, <laughs> we'll see. You know what I mean? Still got this on me foot six weeks post-surgery and I'll have it on for another six weeks. It's going to be about after I get married, getting back in shape and getting my fitness back up and my leg back to 100% before I even think about fighting. I've had setbacks, you know what I mean? And my foot got infected, the wound got infected and my foot went septic. Better go and get that sorted and as well and stuff like that. <laughs> A few things would have, could have went wrong have went wrong. So, I don't know, lad, you know what I mean? I want to fight before the end of the year, but... I rushed back with me Andy years ago and lost a fight because of it, so I'm not rushing back. I'm gonna let the healing process happen this time. I'm gonna let it all go smoothly, get my ligaments back to full strength, get better, and then once once I'm back to 100 percent fitness, then I can get a full fight camp behind me. I just wanna get back in the cage, I don't care who it's against, if it's the top 15 or not. But as I've always said, I'm in no rush. This question is from Fish Star. Trying to think of something with the highest profit margin. <laughs> now, it'd probably be um, like a cafe. It would be sand, you know what I mean? But the only thing is, you're stinking a grease 24 7. Give me half of a job there in a cafe. Know what we haven't got in the UK, actually? And then an out burger at the franchise in and out. And we, we'd have it in the UK. 
So this one is from Alquiz234. And people always ask about the diet and stuff and it's not a quick fix solution. When I do and do a weight cut like that, it's, a, it's never a nice weight cut. I give myself like 10 weeks, that's how I do it. You know what I mean? I have to do a proper diet for 10 weeks and I don't do like hip workouts. I'll do proper strength and conditioning regimes. Like I'll go and lift heavy twice a week and I'll jog three times a week as well as doing me MMA sessions once or twice a day at least. So as I say, there's no, there's no quick fix. Like everyone's always after, everyone always wants. It's just hard work. And dedication. Well, yeah. <laughs> to say it, say it quite bluntly. Um, Want to get in on this question, Laura? <laughs> My dad hates cameras. Hates them. My bird doesn't really appreciate cameras being about all the time. Yeah, come here. Can I hear this question? Question here off someone saying, um, basically telling me to f off. Like, have the cameras following me all the time, saying, yeah, is it, is it uh, intrusive for me family members and stuff like that? Yeah, extremely. <laughs> but I like the cameraman, John, so it's alright. <laughs> so I don't mind. There you go, Laura, that's the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> but we get on with it for yous, you know what I mean? Yous enjoy the vlogs and yous enjoy seeing the inside life, so... We can't show yous everything, like, but I'll show you what we can. Yeah, it's probably put done it both ways. Pressure on my shoulders in a negative and a positive way. You know what I mean? I don't think it's changed me at all in the slightest. I think it's become a lot of a diva. No, that's I was just about to you took the words out of your mouth. Sometimes in the morning when I wake <laughs> up. Just in the morning. And I haven't had a joint. I can bite people's heads off. You know what I mean? But I haven't had a joint. I'm sad. I can be a bit of a diva in the morning. Though. Like when I woke up from that surgery. I had to say sorry to people on that. I felt it felt terrible like an hour or two later. I was biting people's heads off. <laughs> but yeah, obviously it's put it's put pressure on my shoulders, but I had pressure on my shoulders since I was 16 and I said that I was gonna be in the entry. Yeah, it puts pressure on my family and that. Yeah. You know what I mean? You just gotta get on with it. I don't know how I, I really don't know how I get on with it. But I do, because I've got to. Because if I don't, I'll have a mental breakdown. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. just gotta get on with it, lad. Just gotta get through every day as we go. Not really, <laughs> just because I see myself as a real fighter. You know what I mean? Like, I don't really see myself doing one of them. I can understand why, like, Nate Diaz has done it. You know what I mean? Back end of his career, he's gonna earn millions and millions of dollars off it. You know what I mean? And they'll probably punch Jake Paul's head in. So yeah, I can understand why like Nate and that have done it now. People are doing it for a payday at the back end of the career. You never know, I might be skint in 10 years. I might need to do one. For now, lad, you won't catch me doing that. I, I have real fights. I know exactly what it is, you know what I mean? It's the first ever MMA fight that I watched from start to finish. And my mate in the Yuffie, Kyle Wilson, showed me. Diego Sanchez versus Clay Guida, one of the best fights ever. And it's funny now because I've met Clay Guida. Clay Guida's one of the nicest men ever. He's a legend, you know what I mean? And I've had interactions with Diego Sanchez and he's an absolute helmet who makes MMA fighters look like idiots. But back then, as I said, I watched that fight and was just like, this is unbelievable. So yeah, I can remember exactly watching that. I watched that fight in like 2009 because I started training like two or three months later after watching a couple of events live. I was like, that was the first fight that got me into the UFC. And then the first fight that First main event that I watched live was Vitor Belfort versus Rich Franklin, UFC 103. To be honest, lad, you can't. Everyone does that. Everyone does that in everyday life. Never mind just being a fighter. You look at things, oh, he's got that, I should have that. You know what I mean? Especially, obviously, with fighters and stuff. But all like in the same boat, we're all trying to get to the same goal, we're all trying to get to the UFC. So it's even it's even more like fish bold on a fighter. You know what I mean? It's, it just all looks the same, so all fighters coming up, like we all get paired to each other lad. I get compared to other fighters coming up all the time lad, because our sport's so young there hasn't actually been that many fighters that have like come up the same way. So everyone's different lad, that's the one thing about this sport as well, everyone is different. People get looked at as the same person just because they've got like a personality what's quite similar, or the wrestling's quite similar, or the strife the same, or the jujitsu is quite similar. People get compared all the time when no two fighters in this sport are the same, but just not. You just gotta focus on yourself, lad. Can't be letting other people get in your head. 
in general take on it. Obviously, I'm an MMA fighter and I've liked Nate Diaz for years, lad. I want Nate Diaz to win. But wouldn't surprise me if Jake Paul beat him. Jake Paul's been in boxing for years now. Nate's still been in doing MMA and stuff, so he hasn't just been solely focusing on his boxing like Jake has. Wouldn't surprise me if Jake outpoints him. Can't see Jake knocking him out. No chance. Diaz will just keep walking forward and walking forward. But he's known for his cardio as well, Nate. So Nate could out cardio. But it's only eight rounds, isn't it? You know I mean, they're only eight round fights. Like, if it was 12 rounds, then I probably would pick Nate. But over eight, I'd probably pick Jake. And do you think it's good for the sport? Good for business? Good for what? Yeah, it's good for old MMA fighters like Nate Diaz and Anderson Silva and Tyrone Woodley, you know what I mean? Because they're earning more money than they've ever than they've ever earned, some of them. But at the same time, it's like a poison chalice, isn't it? Because you're going over to someone else's sport and we still get judged like we're having an MMA fight. No boxers will come over and fight MMA because they know what'll happen, you know what I mean? And that's just the way it is. That'll be Islam Makhachev, isn't it? <laughs> he is the number one in the division, you know what I mean? He's got the belt. Doesn't look like he's going to lose it anytime soon. This fight with Volk was close, but Volk is another one of the best in the world, pound for pound. So, yeah, I'd have to say Islam Makhachev, lad. He's quality. You know what I mean? He's got his striking's getting better every fight, and he's got some of the best grappling on the planet. Gingy locks, yeah. Gingy locks, that'll be. Gingy locks. Uh, I don't think so. I'm not sure. I don't know if I've ever farted while I grappled with the opponents. I've done it in the gym plenty of times, farted on people while I've been grappling with them. It's all fun and games, isn't it? You know what I mean? But, eh. Uh, Probably having a fight without even noticing. My big one, that what you'll probably notice in between that, well, saying that, I do it when I'm, you'll obviously seen it, John, when I'm sparring in the gym, I always bear. I'm surprised I haven't done that in between rounds in a fight yet, but that'll probably come. I'm proud of inspiring kids, young people, to do something with their lives, you know what I mean? Means more than anything else ever will, lad. Inspiring the next generation to actually do something with their lives. And obviously, me foundation now, making the, the body foundation, that's gonna help so many people in so many different walks of life. So that's something I'm most proud of. Yeah, of course I would. Of course I would. Like, that's a no brainer. You know what I mean? Especially because they're fighting at 170, I think. <laughs> fight the weight above, even better. Um, nah, of course, I'd fight McGregor. Any MMA fighter who says no to that is a f idiot. You know what I mean? The biggest name in the sport. He's what everyone else wants to aspire to. Everyone wants to earn as much money as he does. Everyone wants as much recognition as he's got. You know what I mean? It's that simple. Like, not many other MMA fighters are a household name in the sports world. McGregor is. Doesn't matter what sport you're talking about, people know who Conor McGregor is. Can't really say that about most MMA fighters. I'm probably more well known than a lot of champions in the UFC. Favourite ever fight to watch? Yeah. Lad, know what? I think I'm gonna have to go with Henderson Shogun. Henderson Shogun one was a scrap. Unbelievable fight, dropped each other multiple times. And two legends, you know what I mean? Two of the old guard, Dan Henderson and Shogun Hua, both fought in pride. And then they had absolute wars in the UFC. Yeah, that's, I'd probably say that's my my top UFC fight of all time. Then he's getting in on it. Well, definitely me, me pet eight on, um, on an English breakfast is mushrooms. Yeah, mushrooms are my pet eight on an English breakfast. Mushrooms should not be on a breakfast. Mushrooms should be in the garden. Mushrooms are disgusting. I'll probably just take mushrooms off an English breakfast and have extra bacon. Yes, lad. Smashed it. One month sober. Proud of you, brother. I just say get in the gym first and foremost. Don't worry about setting any big major goals. Go in the gym, lad. Just get in the gym. Get your first little sweat on, see how it goes, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You need to get used to it first, get, get used to your surroundings. Don't just think, oh, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start bench pressing at 100 kilo. Yeah, just get in the gym and get your first little session done and then you'll feel even better about yourself. If I went up in weight class, it wouldn't be for a good few years, you know what I mean? It'll be like, a, like Rafael dos Anjos, the way he's went up in weight class when he got a little bit older and he's moved up in weight class to, to like prolong his career, you know what I mean? We'll see in years to come if I do that. At the minute, I'm pretty comfortable at 155. Good question, Lewis Smith. Everyone should know this. Everyone should know my favorite fighter is, love. My favorite MMA fighter of all time, UFC fighter of all time, is Big Nog Minotaro Nogueira. Cause he is the epitome of a warrior. He's the epitome of a fighter. Like, when he was a little kid, he got hit by a truck, you know what I mean? And like, should have died. That's why he had scars all over him. 
got better, got told he should never do any sort of sports, went to jiu-jitsu, got into MMA, became pride heavyweight champion of the world, became UFC interim heavyweight champion of the world, you know what I mean? He's an absolute legend of the sport, lad. He is the definition of a warrior, lad. Big nog. If my career can be half as good as his, I'll be over the moon. Thank you very much, everyone. All the questions that you sent in, even the ones that I never got to respond to, thank you very much for taking time out your day and sending questions in. We will try and do this again sometime soon. If you liked it, let us know in the comment section. Yeah, see you all next week for fame. Peace out, like, comment, subscribe, lots of love the body.